I know what you're thinking. Finally, right? What's going on everybody? This is Zach with Strictly Shisha. Finally, I am doing the review of the B2 Hookah. The most requested review ever. I know I've been taking my time to do this review, but it deserves a lot of attention and there's a lot of detail in this pipe. So let's jump into it. So B2 Hookahs are revered as the, yes, the premier USA made machined CNC modular pipes. Now, in past videos, I have critiqued them a little. There are some features and aspects of the pipe that I'm totally not in love with, but they are still wonderful pipes. And some of the features that B2 says is worth buying is their ingenuity and design that went into this pipe. There are a lot of design aspects and ingenuity that went to this pipe that are far above other pipes on the market. The next aspect of this pipe is its modularity. This pipe is able to shorten into three different heights, make it almost three different hookahs. The next selling point is its exclusivity. This pipe is hard to get. It's not available right now. They're, I think they're in the production of the V4s of the B2 hookah. So this is something that not everyone will have. This is definitely a showpiece and a statement piece. Some things that they didn't mention, the culture behind this pipe, the people who make it, the ideas behind it, the story behind the B2 and the stealth bomber design, the culture behind this hookah is worth buying into. And also, one thing that they didn't mention, the smokeability of this pipe. This pipe does yield excellent smoke production. It's a wonderful, wonderful pipe to smoke out of and such a joy. Let's get into the details of this pipe now. Starting on the bottom of the B2, it does have a threaded machine diffuser. And that is something you guys know that I do love. I love the fact that you can take the diffuser off, which some people love doing on their B2. You get that traditional rumble, that growl from the hookah that everyone loves. Personally, I like a nice, smooth, quiet draw. As you guys can see here in the picture of the diffuser, there's a ring of exterior holes on the outside rim of the diffuser and a large hole on the bottom. The benefit of having that large hole, there's no restriction coming from the diffuser itself. Personally though, this is not the quietest diffuser on the market and not the smoothest. I would like for B2 to release an additional diffuser ring that you could attach to this in replace of the one that comes with it that's even quieter, has more holes, and not that giant hole on the bottom. This is something easily that B2 can do, especially because they sell all the parts separately on their website. Something, by the way, that I absolutely love, if you happen to lose a piece or break it or whatever may have you, you can actually replace the parts very easily and not have to buy a whole new hookah. So I would like for them to offer an additional style diffuser for the bottom of this. That's just my preference. I know a lot of people really love the diffuser on this pipe and some would consider it one of the best diffusers on the market. I don't agree with that, but it works really well for my need. Moving on up the down stem, it is anodized beautifully. This has a gold anodized finish to it. Supposedly, it's an aerospace grade anodization. By the way, this is made out of some top tier, I don't know, godly like aluminum. Very, very high quality, and we'll touch on that in a moment. Today, I am using the standard size down stem that comes with your B2 setup. They offer other size down stems just in case you want to pair it with different size bases. The standard one that comes with it, though, works really well with your standard Egyptian bases. Today, I am using a boho base. The length of the down stem complements really well where I like to keep the water level high enough where it's not airy and I get those nice thick clouds and not too long where it is voluminous and just airy feeling. So I like the standard length down stem that comes with it. This down stem is a threaded removable down stem. Dun, 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 dun. You guys know in the past, I've been hesitant to use threaded removable modular hookahs. The fact that I was worried about them cross threading. Now that I've been introduced to higher quality pipes, I see that there are more pros to threaded hookahs than there are cons. Just yesterday, I was soaking a threaded pipe in the sink. I was able to remove all the parts, soak it, and get a nice deep clean. I like the fact that I can take this thing apart, make sure every aspect of it is clean, and it does have pretty good thread. So I like the fact that I can take it out. Moving on up into the solid, very good quality heart. This thing is heavy. It is a traditional chamber. 
meaning there are dedicated hose and purge ports. Now, someone did point this out to me. The hose port and the purge port are not centered in the bottom of the heart in relation to the downstem. I don't know if this is a manufacturing error. It doesn't really affect the smoke, the quality, the longevity of the pipe, but it is something you note that they are not dead centered in the bottom of the stem. So it's an interesting point. The way that the purge port and hose port are drilled, they're drilled at a unique angle. It's not a solid pipe throughout that goes directly to the port. It's almost at an angle. And I know with the B2 Reaper, I noticed especially with that smaller size hookah, it actually prevented it from flooding. So when you took those D pits or you don't have a diffuser on there and it bubbles up, because the angle of that port, it actually doesn't flood as easily. So I like the design on that. That's, that's pretty cool. The hose port is a removable hose port. It does protrude out unlike something like the Regal. Very nice though. It's at a nice angle where it doesn't kink very easily and it's just nice to take out clean and you don't have to worry about it. Simple hose port, nice wide gauge, works with a variety of different hoses. Today I am using a droid hose. By the way, the golds don't match. So if you're wondering that, yeah, the golds don't match. On the other side, you do have the purge port. Now both the ports are threaded the exact same. So you can swap sides or remove one of the purge ports to add another hose port to make a multi-hose hookah. This is something I will never do with this hookah. I always want a purge port. I typically smoke by myself anyway, so that's not something I'm worried about. The purge port on this, very, very unique. It is not a solid piece. It does unscrew, and there is a top cap, which you can unscrew to remove the ball. I love the fact that if you take the purge port out, your ball is just not aimlessly rolling around. It does actually sit in this little chamber where you can clean out and make it very nice. Now, one thing with the purge port though, it doesn't reset. And that's something I mentioned in past videos. A hookah of this high quality and the purge ball does not reset. Meaning when I take a big hit and I purge, you don't hear that audible click of the ball falling back down. You don't hear that ball falling back down. I mean the ball does not reset until you actually take a hit. Now with someone like me who takes nice big hits, like I'm sure all of you, that's not gonna be a big deal. But when I first got this hookah, I had an issue with that purge ball actually resetting. It was one of the most frustrating things in the world. I get this brand new hookah, it's beautiful, paid a top tier price, and I go to smoke and I get an air gap. And I'm like, what is going on? I found out that the ball does not always reset. I reached out to the owner of B2. He explained to me that my water levels were not correct and I highly disagree with that. I, he said there's a pressure system that doesn't allow the ball to reset if the water is not the right level. I disagree with that 100%. I think it's a flaw in the design and that the ball should reset automatically like I showed you guys in the CNC made pipe. Once you purge, finish purging and all the smoke is done expelling, the ball should click back in. With this one, it doesn't. Similarly with the B2 Reaper, when I purged, the ball did not reset to the point where I was actually not able to manually suck it back in and reset that ball. With the B2 Reaper, the purge cap that's encapsulated is actually larger, so I was able to stick a second ball in there and have the weight of the second ball reset the first ball automatically. With this purge cap though, I'm unable to add that second ball to there and it's just been a constant issue. I have noticed though, throughout the use of the pipe, it's become less of an issue or maybe something I'm noticing a lot less. Like I said, with someone like me who sucks really hard, you don't really notice it. But for other people, new smokers, people who take baby hits, maybe it would be a big issue. That's one thing I have a gripe with this hookah. I think that is a design flaw, and to my knowledge, they have not improved that in future models. I have consulted with other people with B2s, and they have noticed similar issues. So this is not an isolated incident. This, I think, is a design flaw overall on the pipe. Like I said though, with me smoking, I don't notice it. With you smoking, I don't know. So that's something to think about. Like I said, for me, it doesn't really bother me these days. I wouldn't have even thought about it today, but I am explaining it to you guys, so that's something I'm noticing. So it's something I've gotten over, it's something I'm okay with now, but the fact that it's still not done properly and it won't work for all smokers is one of my gripes with this pipe. One of the few gripes. Moving on to a positive note though, the purge on this does function beautifully. Let me demonstrate that now. You guys ready? Beautiful purge. The purge on this is smooth, it works well, it expels all the smoke. It's not hiccupy, you don't feel the vibration of the ball, it just works. 
fantastic purge on this. Works very, very well. So I love the functionality of the purge itself. The ball not resetting, separate issue. Moving on up, the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stem. Look at that design. Like I said, this is modular, meaning there are pieces you can remove to adjust the height. Today I only have one middle portion in. This is the medium height. You can add that second portion in there to make it even taller. The medium one is my preferred height. I think it smokes the best. It's manageable for me. It's not too high. I'm not like over here trying to figure out the coals and stuff. So I love this height personally. But if you're someone who wants a desktop pipe, remove that middle pipe and you can actually shorten it for a desktop. Or if you like it super tall and keep it on the ground, add that second one in there and it's modular, it's beautiful, they're included. So the feature to change the height of the hookah into three different sizes already included is one of my favorite features and the feature that most constitutes the high price point of this hookah. I love that fact. Next into the design, the heatsink design. When I first saw the hookah and I walked up to the B2 booth and I saw that heatsink design, I was blown away. I was like, this is something I have not seen before. Since then, other hookahs do now have this feature. But when I first saw it on the B2, I was like, man, this is different. This is unique. So if you guys are not familiar with the heatsink, the heatsink design actually has these grooves etched into the stem that allows air to pass through and naturally cools down the stem. So when you're smoking with a hot bowl and coals, the heat can transfer to the stem and negatively affect your session. So the heatsink design prevents the stem from excessively heating and causing your smoke to be warm and just not perform as well. Now this is not a feature you can see that it works, but I can tell from the feel of it, this hookah does not heat up excessively and I do think it works. Moving on up into the bowl port where you have the majority of the heatsink design where all the heat is concentrated, there's actually a portion where the tray actually basically locks into. Now it does allow the tray to swivel this way, but it prevents it from knocking up if you have weight on here and actually moving unnecessarily. I said this in my B2 Reaper review, I love that. I love that the tray is in there secure. It doesn't wobble left and right and it's nice and secure in there. So that feature is very good and I wish all hookahs really had that. Moving on into the tray. So the tray is not something that is included in the $289 price. You are just getting the stem and the threaded diffuser. Now the tray is not just your standard tray. So it is different. You are getting something but the tray is sold separately for $59.99. Now, I'm not necessarily happy about that. I'm not gonna buy this hookah without the matching tray. That's just kind of silly. You don't spend that kind of price to have a generic tray on the top. So you are gonna buy the tray. I think they should be included for a little bit lesser of a price, but I do see that this tray is different. It's like I said, not your standard, just flat tray. This is a two layered tray. The bottom tray is anodized gold, just like the rest of the hookah. Matches really well. Like I said, it sits in that groove designed for this hookah but it does have a top tray on here, I'll show you guys right now. And that top tray is designed to catch the ash, allow the ash to pass through the bottom, sit on that bottom tray, and allow the coals to have air and stay cherried. So if you're someone who rests coals on your tray, which I don't recommend doing, but if you're someone who likes to rest an extra round on there, it will not actually black out as much as it would sitting on a tray with no airflow. So this tray does have more features than your standard tray. I just don't like that you have to pay for it. Uh, some of the gripes I have about this tray, this top plate does not sit flush with the bottom tray, so you do get some rumbling. I'll show that right now. Oh, still smoking good. You can audibly hear the vibration in the tray, and I just think it's slightly bent. Could just be mine, or it could be all of them. I'm not sure. I only have one tray. So I don't like the fact that there is a vibration, audible noise, but I do like that two tray design where it catches the ash on the bottom, keeps things cleaner. I bumped this tray very, very heavily, and the ash has sat on the bottom, and nothing has fallen off. The size of this tray, it is Oscar approved. This is a nice, large, functional tray. Beautifully aesthetic tray, high quality, will not bend in the hand. Like I said, you pay for that. This is a great tray, but you are paying separately for that. The bowl port on this, standard, excellent bowl port. Fits all your grommets, your mod grommet, your regular grommet. You're not worried about that funky Regal one or the Prometheus one or other ones I've griped about in the past. Beautiful, beautiful bowl port. Works really well. Simple, yet it works well. The anodization on the bowl port 
It's typically where you see it failing first. The anodization on the bowl port has not chipped off. It still looks beautiful. And I've run this thing for many months now and it still looks amazing. Now to touch on the finish on this, this is a gold anodized finish. Like I said, supposedly aerospace grade. All I know is the finish on this has held up amazingly. It's not a high gloss finish. It's not a matte finish. I think in high gloss, the gold will look a little tacky. I like the combination of, it's like a satin finish, like right in the middle, something different. I haven't seen this a lot. So I love the finish on this pipe. I have noticed on the down stem, it does stain a little bit, meaning that when it drips down and you get that buildup sitting for a long period of time, you will stain a little bit. A little elbow grease, I have gotten it off, but the quality of the finish is excellent. It pairs very nicely. It complements the quality of the metal it's made of. So it's beautiful, aesthetically appealing. This is one of the most beautiful pipes that I have. Undoubtedly with that gold boho base, it's just, it's beautiful. I love the finish on this. I'm not worried about the finish flaking, chipping. I've not beat it around per se, but I'm not careful intentionally with these things to test them out for you guys. And the finish is held up remarkably. I mean, beautifully. Like I said, I love the satin finish to this. So it's amazing, amazing. So before I touch on the quality on this pipe, I want to show you the full setup and all of its glory. I mean, it just gets even more beautiful the more you add on to it. So for the price point, you can expect very, very high quality and this thing does not let you down. It's top tier quality, it's machine made, it's precise, it's exact, it's heavy. If you compare the body weight to something like the CNC made pipe, a pipe of half of its price, you can see the thickness of the walls of this. It's much thicker. You feel it in hand, you can feel the quality, you know you're getting something top tier out of this pipe. So I'm very happy with the quality of materials used in this, the joints, I mean the precision of the cut, it's just, it's beautiful. But now let's get to one aspect of the quality that I'm definitely not happy with. The threading on this. Now, I earlier in the video said the threading on this was good, which it is. I'm not worried about this pipe cross-threading in any way, shape, or form. But the threading on this has not been deburred, and they are very, very sharp. So when I've cleaned this, I've walked away with gashes in my finger. When I'm twisting on those threads to clean them up, they are extremely sharp. So just be careful with this. The threading is sharp. They're not clean. They are done well, meaning it will not cross thread. They lock in, the threads do not leak. I'm not worried about them cross threading. They're just extremely sharp. Another point to add, this is supposed to be modular, meaning I'm supposed to be able to take this piece off and connect it down here. I am not. These middle two pieces are exact, but the threading is not perfect, so you cannot interchange these two pieces. The top bowl port does not thread to the bottom one as well as it does to the top one. I'm pretty sure that's some sort of manufacturing error. I don't think it's supposed to be that way. To my knowledge, this top bowl port should be able to unscrew to both of these pieces. Mine just doesn't do that. I kind of feel that's an isolated issue when I've reached out to other people with B2s. They haven't said that at all. So I think that's just an issue with mine. To my knowledge, like I said, this piece should be able to screw on to both of these middle sections. Mine just does it better with the top one, so I'm gonna leave it that way. That's something that does bother me, but then again, I know what to do with it. it screws into the top one just fine, and I can just adjust accordingly. So not a big deal. Now let's get into what you guys care about the most. How does this thing smoke? Let's see. Does this perform like an over $300 pipe? I would say yes. This thing performs excellently. Smokeability is amazing. I love the wide open draw from the down stem. The open hose port, like I said, purges very smoothly. I've had nothing but amazing, smoky, delicious sessions from this pipe. So smokeability is perfect in my opinion. I love the draw. I love everything about the smokeability of this pipe. You guys saw I had some hesitations in the things like the threading, the purge ball, not resetting, but that's up to you guys. Do you guys think this is worth it for the price? Do you guys want it based off some of the facts that I've told you guys in this video? That's up to you to decide. I know when I first saw the price tag on this hookah, I was like, there's no way I'm buying that thing. But you know what? I heard feedback from other people who have the pipe and they all love it. Some people say this is their most favorite pipe, their most prized possession. They love it. I know if this was the last pipe I had to the day I die, I probably would be happy. I like it that much. Granted, there are some flaws this I think can be easily fixed in newer versions. So B2, the owner, if you're watching this, I recommend something like deburring those threads if you haven't already done it in the newer versions. Working on the purge port and having that ball reset automatically, those are some easy things you can do to make this very high price point 
very top tier hookah be perfect like I expect it to be. So, to answer your question very simply, do I recommend you buy this? Very tough for me to say, depends on your budget aesthetically. I think if you want an amazing pipe, this is that pipe. If you want the perfect pipe, this is not that pipe. Is there any pipe on the market that I think is perfect? No, I think all the pipes need a little bit of work depending on the price point, the perspective that you're looking at. I think this is definitely an amazing pipe though. I think if you own one, you're probably proud to own it. If you're thinking about buying one, I don't think you're gonna regret it, especially once you get this thing in hand, you'll forget about all those issues. So if you guys are thinking about buying one, like I bought this, definitely check out hookaheroes.com. That's where I picked up my B2. I got the service, I got the hookah. It's, it's an all around happy experience ordering from Hookah Heroes. By the way, check out B2's website. Yes, I have it up here. I'm looking at the website right now. They have just released their precious cut hookahs. Beautiful, I'm looking at the pictures right now and man, there's this insert that goes in here. It's beautiful. My friend Muhammad has one. It has like a red and a gold. It's like almost like a marbly look finish to it. Definitely a statement piece. Gorgeous, gorgeous pipe. People will envy that pipe forever if you get it does have a hefty price tag, so it's not gonna be for everyone. So now that you've watched this very long video and you decided that the B2 pipe is right for you, but it's just a little bit out of your price range, think about skipping buying the B2 hose and the B2 tongs and that little fork thing. I don't think you need those right away. Stick to just buying the stem itself and the matching tray. I think these are the necessities. You can always upgrade to buying the hose and the matching tongs later. Like you guys can see, I am using a droid hose right now and. This is a perfect setup and I'm really enjoying. So thank you guys always for watching. I do appreciate you guys. Like I said, check out Hookah Heroes if you guys wanna buy your B2 hookah. But thank you guys always for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't. Thumbs up if you want more videos and I appreciate you guys and thank you guys for your patience throughout this video. Bye guys.